hello welcome and I hope you're doing good in here we are at part 2 just about to officially start our review by the exterior design this is an SUV kind of mainly competing with the BMW X6 Mercedes GLE Coupe and with the Porsche Cayenne to be honest price wise the cheapest of Model X is actually comparable with the most expensive BMW M X6, Mercedes GLE 63 Coupe AMG, and with the Porsche Cayenne GTS. There is also another issue. How do you compare a car that is powered by electricity with something so complex as a power engine? It beats them in lightness, it beats them in simplicity, in performance, in consumption and efficiency, in design and habitability, as well as in a ratio of how much of a car you get for the money. You know how they say, for example, a Porsche 911 for $10,000 is a lot of a car for the money. So Tesla is pretty much it, a lot of a car for the money. There's pretty much no more reason to buy anything else except for prestige or financial reasons. While you do have to admit BMW and Porsche may still be better handling car for sports and ultimate fun, I think, that's my opinion. But other than that, Audi, Mercedes, Lexus, you name it, they better get in the electric powertrain business soon. Well. Anyway, for the purpose of exterior design, let's ignore powertrain for a while. The Model X really looks like a sport soft SUV. Why soft? Because it's kind of Tesla's idea for a family van. They got rid of the sliding doors and replaced them with what they call Falcon doors. And then they lifted the rear part of the roof a little bit down with an angle in order to give it the SUV look. The design they chose for this Model X is, I would say, kind instead of aggressive and harsh. If you take a look at the side view, you'll notice how high up is the roof. This aspect of the design, you really feel it when you're in front of the car in real life. This car is huge. Out of factory, despite black, silver or white, there are two bright colors you can choose from, red and blue. Usually I would recommend brighter colors, just because all cars on the road seems to be dark, silver or white. But the Model X distinguishes itself so well from the crowd, that its simple presence is a brighter color in the crowd. Maybe if Pure had a color, it would look like the Model X. Now, you should know that this car has not been officially rated for crash safety. According to Tesla's own crash test, it should be the safest SUV ever built. They claim the engine-free front end zone acts as a better crumple zone. According to Tesla, during a front end crash, there is a lot of space for things to collapse with each other without having an engine that moves around ending up between the front seats and hurting the passengers. I am not entirely convinced the engine was the safety issue, but makes sense nonetheless. They also claim the battery support provides incredible side impact protection and that because the battery is fitted in the floor, it also provides better stability against rollovers because it lowers the center of gravity, which is also fine. But I think they did not have to bring up the fact that the car has no engine and a battery pack instead, just to prove a point. The real safety feature that they claim is key feature for safety is multiple sensors and hardware that are always scanning the surroundings of the car looking for potential trouble. Actively working to prevent a crash from happening. To continue on exterior design, there is four wheels designed to choose from. Regardless of the variant, it's a bit expensive I would say, and keep in mind that bigger wheels 
means lesser range than usual. Painful, but sometimes you have to suffer to look good, right? Although keep in mind as well, there is one part from owning an expensive car which you never hear of until you own one, which is because of poor road quality, people go through an average of seven tire change and three wheel change each year. So to stay out of statistic, stick with thick rubber and smaller wheels. If you still can't resist, I guess the 22 inch turbine wheels are pretty amazing looking, especially in darker color. Those over here are the 20 inch base set of wheel. They are beautiful wheels as well. This one over here look like the one which cost 3,800 Canadian dollar, 20 inch wheel, but this is not it. I think those were offered on the earlier Model S. Now about the roof, as standard you get panoramic roof. No sliding, no opening, they made the choice for you from the start on the drawing board. But it's a special roof nonetheless because half of the roof is made from one piece of glass that starts off from your windshield and keeps on up to about half the car just over the front seat headrest. If you really wanted a sunroof, consider yourself lucky. On the Model S, the panoramic sunroof is a 2000 Canadian dollar option. Otherwise, all you get is a blank roof. On the P90D and P100D, wherever there is a P, basically, you get a standard red brake calipers. Now, usually you cannot upgrade to those calipers, they are simply not available on any other variant, except through the online Tesla shop, which this shop is exclusive to North America. Total cost for red calipers is 2300 US dollars, including installation. I have been able to find a German Tesla online shop. It only offers some gears for the Model S, nothing for the Model X or Roadster, and not much options anyway available yet, except for carpets, outdoor car cover, snow chains, and common accessory like that. Speaking about calipers, did you ever know that Tesla's actually comes with double rear calipers, like on a Lamborghini Aventador for instance, but also commonly used on all type of cars, cars like Acura, Volkswagen, Audi, Citroën, and many others. Where they decided to use a second caliper to ensure parking brake. The most reasonable explanation I found is the fact that many fast cars need stronger stopping power, so they commonly use multiple pistons in the main caliper which therefore needs a higher hydraulic force to operate those calipers. You don't need all that braking power to hold the car still when parked. And, and to tap in the hydraulic system in order to fit a separated parking brake as well must be complicated, expensive and overkill. A simple electricity controlled small caliper should suffice to stop the car from rolling back and forward while parked. On any P variant, P basically means performance by the way, so on any P variant comes as standard with an active spoiler which folds down as well so it doesn't mess up the look of the car all the time. This car over here is a 90D. And as you can see, it does have the spoiler, which is folded up. Now, according to the website, you can no longer order the spoiler on a non-P variant. This spoiler is not optional, not even through the North American online Tesla shop. Finally, there is also some mods you, for your headlights. What they call three direction dynamic LED turning light for night vision. Those are not signal lights. The headlights actually illuminate light beam where you really need it, depending on your steering wheel position. 
You have only three different positions available. First one, second, and third. See, it only activates apart from the light once your wheels are in a specific direction. It doesn't move the high beam light, which you commonly need when cornering at high speed. The only problem is they don't literally turn the light. Your high beam do not move, which means it's not as much efficient on high speed cornering. So it has some limitations. Usually what you really need is something more like this. First one, second, and third. When you turn left and right, the main high beam light follows your direction. The headlights themselves seem to be full LED. To me, they look full LED. People say it's full LED, but I wasn't able to find any official Tesla say on the matter. So that's pretty much it for the exterior personalization unless you consider towing hitch as part from the design there is a good and a bad news about the towing pack the good news is the tow pack is relatively affordable cost about a thousand canadian dollar the bad news is it's only available with the smart air suspension cost an additional 3,500 Canadian dollar and not everybody is a fan of air suspension. Mostly because they could get expensive to maintain later down the line after limited warranties ended. Now the cool part with this hitch is that you're now able to mount your accessory hitch for bicycles, snowboards and many more equipment, cost 200 Canadian dollars. I just have to add this accessory hitch doesn't seem available for purchase anywhere outside North America. It's surprising since this is an option on the North American Design Studio which is supposed to be the same everywhere you are. Anyway, unlike Porsche for example, Tesla doesn't have that many mods to spend your money on. On the Porsche Macan we are talking roof rails in aluminium, side blades in carbon, adding a spoiler, different mirrors, air intake, grills and fuel filler cap. Usually my opinion would be to skip that nonsense and spend your money on charity instead. But this time, with Tesla, as we'll discuss later in episode 4. Tesla is another story, you might even be allowed to consider Tesla as a charity for the entire world. We'll discuss about it later. Until then, this is the end of part 2. Next episode, we'll get into the motors and components under the hood, seats and trunk. There's a lot of mechanical stuff dispatched all around the car. See you there. Whether you're looking to buy or simply to be entertained by nice car footage, I recommend you subscribe and scroll through the channel. There are many things which discuss many cars. Thank you. Take care and goodbye.